Do you? Hopefully you do. Hey, there's that stuff that came up. Where's the, uh, where's the, uh, where's the, I don't know, the passage? There we go. Wow. There we go. I knew I had to wait on that one. But, um, yeah, we were having some tough internet issues. Some big internet issues. So, um, if you're having trouble for some uh, if you're having trouble listening on here, you're always welcome to come in and listen on Discord. If you do have any type of trouble, I don't know what's... It's just one of those days, you know. It's just one of those days where it's just... You know, some days, electronics can go good. Other days can go poof. So, you know. It's it's all, all of them things. Um, every single one of them. Also, just because we didn't receive a prayer request doesn't mean that we shouldn't pray. So let's go to the Lord and with prayer, shall we? Home like gracious for our Lord, I come to your throne, Lord. Lord, for whatever you have, help us to open up our hearts to you. To be able to receive your blessing, your wisdom, your encouragement from whatever you are going to be talking about tonight, Lord. And hopefully we can receive your word. Not just be able to hear your word, but to be doers of your word. Be able to put action behind this. As it could be something that we probably need to hear. Because I don't want, if I hear something that sounds simpler, simple, I don't want it just to be a reminder. And hopefully no one will feel that, feel the same way. They want to be able to do it. Put in the action. So just please help us open up our hearts fully. Not halfway, not even one fourth away, but all the way to receive everything that you got for it. Let me do all this holy Christ name. Amen and a a a a a a a a a a a a amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Hopefully, hopefully it won't crash, right? Hopefully, <laughs> I, I say that now. I'm like, well, I don't know. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Well, the first, first, I want to mention is sixteen thirty-three, and this will go into our whole lesson here. It says, "I have told you these things, so that you, in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble." But take heart, I have overcome the world. You know what I would love for this verse to say? In this world, you will not have trouble of any sort of situation. There will be no trouble coming against you. I would I would love if I'm reading like an incorrect translation. Like I would. I would definitely love to see that, but you know, it's not there. Obviously. And, like, we, we know as Christians, as followers, as disciples, like, we know that he is controlled. Like, he has the power, and that he is also within us. But trouble also comes within us. Like, what happened when I was doing, when I literally was about to finish announcements? My computer just crashed. You know, and I'm like, why? Why? Out of all the times, it has never crashed before. And all of a sudden, it went poof. That's 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 the strangest thing. I have, like, it barely, rarely crashed. I don't know. And also, we seem to blame others as well when trouble comes against us. Like, it's that person's fault. Not my fault. It's definitely, it cannot be my fault. It's the other person's fault. You know, I could blame Coco. Coco, it's your fault. It's your fault. Or I could blame my girlfriend. It's your fault. Like, I could just shift blame all day. <laughs> but sometimes people will come after us. And sometimes people may not like what we say or the things that we do. It's just... 
It's just that it's, it's, it just happens like that. Every person is different. If every person is the same, then there's probably something wrong. Because I don't think God made every human being the same. You know, I'm different from everyone else. I mean, are you a Resident Evil fan? I am. You probably don't even care about the franchise. I love Legend of Zelda. You probably don't care about the franchise. Or I can go and say I love Fortnite. Even though I hate Fortnite and hope that it dies. <laughs> but you get you get the thing. As I'm saying that. But we also kind of spread it around as gossip. People like to do that. Some people really love drama. As well as so like, did you hear about that other person? I mean, I, I don't I don't know. Like what did, what did you hear? I heard that person became a prostitute. Nah, really? That person? Like, then we start hearing these rumors, these gossip, these basically lies. Or something that we don't want to go around. Some people like that. As us, we shouldn't. Like, I can go around, like, I get so much hate for this Christian. You know, being a different Christian and people come in. I can sit there and go to different servers and start attacking them the same way that they attack me. I could do that. I could definitely do that. But guess what? I'm not. Because I don't think that's what Jesus would do. And that's something that I don't want to do. You know? But it does say in the first, we will have trouble. We will have trouble. Things are good. Like, it, it's going to come. And sometimes we want God to be right next to us, like right there and there. And he is. He is. He, he's always there with us. But we're thinking, please save me. Please, I, I'm sick of this crap, man. I'm, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this drama. You know, I'm sick of all of this. You know, why, why? Cur curse my enemies. You know, all they're doing is hating on me, Lord. And it's so, it's it's hard, Lord. It's hard to not show love back. It is hard where I want to punch them in the teeth. It is hard where I want to flip them off and say so many words. Lord, it is hard. It's difficult. And sometimes we do that. We, we do that a lot. And... I say this time and time again. I feel like that's the only time we go to God. I really do. When you when you really think about this, I feel like that's the only time we go to God is when we are in trouble. That is it. That's the only time that we go to God. How often do you go to God when something good happens? You know, how often do you go to God when you graduate from high school or college, get married, have a first job, first house? You probably wouldn't be thinking about God in that minute. You'll be so happy because you did it. You finally got it. But I feel like that's the only time. You know, and I don't want to be like Adam and Eve where I just run away and cover it up. You know, and God's just sitting there, why do you clothe yourself? Um, you see, God, it's the snake's fault. See, they already, there were, Adam and Eve were already shifting blame. It's like, it's the snake's fault. It, it's not us. Then, then why do you cover yourself? Uh, we just thought we looked good in leaves. Can you just imagine Adam and Eve said that? <laughs> But I don't, I don't want to be like Adam and Eve. I don't want to sit there and, you know, cover stuff up, uh, up, you know, just hide stuff under the rug, you know, just sweep it up, or just run and hide. The thing is, God will see you no matter what you do. God will see you. Even though if someone's not going to see you, God will always see you. That's the thing. But... It does say in this verse, and I'm and I and I'm gonna read it again. John sixteen thirty three. I have told you these things so that you in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. 
See, he has overcome the world. He, he has overcome the world. And sometimes we have to look into us and examine our hearts and kind of ask God, how do you use me? You know? And sometimes I feel like people, people often ask this question when we think about trouble, right? When we think about struggles, when we think about seas, seasons, we often think, if God is so good, you know, we get the I get this question from God, if God's so good, why there why is why why kill infants? Huh? Remember that Egypt story? Egypt story. Yeah, with the dude with the stick. Dude with a stick. You know, and it was like raining like frogs. Raining of frogs. And it, and I was like, oh Moses, because at first I didn't know, because that could have been I was like, stick, you know? So I was like, why? Because the thing is, is that God doesn't kill people. It is up to us. Like, we have free will. You can do whatever you want to. You can choose not to listen in. You can choose to do that. You know, you can choose to do whatever you want to do. You can choose. We're in a fallen world where there's sin. There's sin in this world. And when sin exists, when it comes, when it exists, then trouble comes. Pain comes. Season comes. And sometimes we think, oh, if I, I, you know, I do all these good things, I'm good. You know, I hear that oftentimes saying like, oh, you know, I go to church on Sunday. That's good enough. That means I can just go to church on Sunday. I'm good. You know, I, I did my good deeds for the week. That does not save you. How, how do you get to heaven? You know, how how do you get to heaven? Oh, Jesus said, I am the truth, I am the way, and I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Except through Him. Not because of a mansion that you have, are you helping the poor? It's all good stuff. None of it's bad. But it's not going to save you. It's not. And then troubles come in like many forms. Like it, it does. You know, I'm pretty sure you've seen Marvel movies or superhero movies. You know, you see heroes struggling to defeat an enemy. You know, watching the Avengers. Like they were struggling to kill Thanos. At one point, they think he's unstoppable. He has all the he has he has the stones. It's impossible. You know, there's no way. Half the world is gone just by a single snap. Troubles is going to come around the corner. Whatever you're doing, even in a video game, there will be troubles in a video game. Like you're doing a good quest, all of a sudden here comes a monster just coming by your way. Just making sure you get yourself ruined or in death, where you have to start all over. And then I feel like in games, we kind of, you know, there's safe areas. There's some hiding spots. There's checkpoints. Mario, for instance, everyone knows Mario, right? There's like a checkpoint in like half of the, in, in the midway. Well, probably not the older Mario games, but at least the newer ones. You get a checkpoint. When you reach the flag, woohoo, you got a checkpoint. That's kind of your safe area, your safe zone. Because when you die, either by a Goomba or a Koopa, you know, or whatever that's in that level, when you die, you know, you go right back to that checkpoint. That is your safe area. In Phasmophobia, some of y'all see me play re uh play Phasmophobia and Reunifies. You know, I open up lockers. When the ghost starts hunting, I know that I will be safe in the locker. That is my safe area. And I feel like, I feel like that's where God wants us to go to. It's trying to find a safe area in the midst of our trouble, in the midst of our persecution. And that He is our safe point. That He is our checkpoint. He is. That is our safe area. When you really think about it, we should be able to run to Him. And the thing is, we can't do it alone. 
even in multiplayer, when you play multiplayer games, when you play MMOs, sometimes there will be quests that requires you and another individual. There will be quests that will be single player purposes where you can solo do it, but sometimes it will say, hey, you know, you kind of need more people. This boss can be, you know, really tough in this dungeon. You know, and you can't do it in your own. You can't, you can't overcome this world on your own. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that. You can't, you can't do it alone. You need heal. In Psalm 50, 15, as it's slowly loading up because, you know, I deal with crash. Yay. And it says this, and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. He does deliver us from our troubles. Even if we don't see it. Because we think, oh man, I've been going this for so long. It's, I can't. And like I said, you can't hide from God. No matter where you go, you can't hide him. You can hide from enemies and games, but you can't hide from God. God is always there for you. He never left you nor forsake you. But at times, there's just days are just too hard, too tough. And I, like I said, I feel like that's the only time we go to him. And there's nothing wrong with going to him in the midst of our trouble. There's nothing wrong with that. But I am just examining my own life because I feel like that's the only time. You know, when do I go? When do I like? It's been a while since I blessed food. Like, I just ate before starting the sermon. I had jambalaya. I didn't think about God in that moment. I thought, man, I'm hungry. I'm starving. See, I, that's why I feel like we're the only. In Romans 5 3 through 5. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. And you're probably thinking, glory in our sufferings? Highly. There's pain. How am I supposed to glorify in that? Highly. Are you sure you read the Bible correctly now? Because I did, 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 do you see how much I've been through? Have you seen my life story? I'm just reading the verse here. <laughs> Also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has pour, been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to each and every single one of us. I did a whole sermon on this verse. And sometimes you feel like nothing's happening. Because I feel like that all the time. Honestly. You know, I feel like nothing's happening. You know, I'm trying to get a job. Nothing happened. Got a bachelor's degree. Y'all probably can't see it on my camera. Because it's behind my Nintendo box right there. But I have a bachelor's degree. And guess what? Didn't do anything. And it just, it, it makes me feel like I must have the worst luck of all times. Like, that 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 has to be it. Like, I must have zero luck, like, of all times. You know? And there's times where I go to him, like, God, do you see this crap that I'm going through? Like, God, do you know that I don't like it here? God, you know, God, God. You know? You know, like I said, I wish, I wish that this first John sixteen thirty three. I, I wish it said, in this world you will not have trouble. Like I said, I would love for that to be a mistake or something, but it's not. But, like I said in Romans, this is character building. It is building our character up. And sometimes, I even did a whole sermon uh, to do that. Uh, with this as well is that we need to be broken down in order to be built back up or even to be repaired 
Because once we fix and shift our mind from the trouble, from the people, from the drama, onto God, it kind of changes our perspectives a, a little bit. Wouldn't you agree? It kind of changes our point of view, the way we see things. Because in Him, we can find strength. In Him, we can find that endurance. In Him, we can find the healing to get back up again. In Him. That's in Him. That is in Him. Psalm 138, 1 through 3. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solely decree that it surpasses your faith. When I call, you answer me. You greatly embolden me. And this is David. He was fixing his eyes. Because the healing comes from him. The rejoicing heal. And we start to feel a bit restored. See, when we go through sufferings, when we go through troubles, it's through it, like it's through him where we can find the true healing. Like online ministry is difficult. Why do you think every time I put staff in the announcements for people that wants to help out? You know, I would love for people to help out. You know, there's plenty of times where I just want to give up and throw the towel. Like, no one wants to listen to me. I'm just one individual. There's a bunch of sermons. But apparently every sermon is plagiarism. No matter what it is. And I, I still don't understand that. I don't think anyone can own a sermon. But that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. But what I'm trying to say is that I feel I, I felt given up at times. Like, look at that. I, I, like, I'm sitting here looking at activity, whether it's my Christian Discord server and the gaming Discord server, and I'm like, it's not going anywhere. And I keep thinking, God, are you sure this is what you want me to do? And the thing is, he did call me to do ministry. And the thing is, I keep pursuing this ministry, no matter what has happened to me. I had a lot of a lot of bad things that were said to me, of course. Russian death threats, of course. Yet I'm still here. I'm still persevering, just like Romans. Just like Romans. That first, I'm gonna read it again. Romans 5, 3 to 5. Not only so, but we have also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love, His love, has been poured out into all of our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to each and every single one of us that ask of it. We will have that stamina. We will be able to survive. That is the point. If you want to write these down. God it gives you the strength. God gives you the stamina and the healing. And there's sometimes we feel like let's let's be honest with ourselves. Let's let's be honest. Sometimes we feel like God can't do it. And you're probably thinking, Holly, we know that God can do it. Yeah, but how do you feel? That's the thing. Because oftentimes, when we get those unanswered prayers, when we feel like God has to answer our prayers, we feel like God's not going to do it. Why should I trust in Him? Why should I put my hope in Him? Like, I've been praying for this for years. For years. Nothing that's happening, God. Nothing is happening. Why? Like, I'm, like I'll be asking God, why should I put my faith in you? Why should I even put my trust in you? you and it kind of reminds me of a video yes a video and i kind of want to show it here on the screen um because i to be honest i feel like this is a powerful uh video very 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 
extremely 100% powerful. Um, and I would like for y'all to just listen to it and just see uh, what you think of this because it explains it explains faithfulness faithful a whole lot more and actually goes a little bit depth and I and I like this I like what is shown here so I'm gonna put it right here here we go because I because you know my computer crash hardy darty door. Um, so, um, I want y'all to watch this. I should probably, you know what, let's put it in the worship. Um, let me put it into the worship here. Um, or just go to another window capture. There we go, so that my face won't be in the way and the chat won't be in the way. Check this video out and tell me your thought. well, I would like to hear your thoughts, hopefully after this sermon. But please watch this, as it's really powerful and it speaks a lot of light. If you tried to describe what God is like, it could be difficult or daunting. But when the people who wrote the Bible pondered the mystery of God, they consistently described God's character in this way. Compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, overflowing with loyal love and faithfulness. We're going to look at this last characteristic of God. It's the Hebrew word emet, which can be translated as faithfulness or even truth. It's related to another word you've probably heard before, amen, which is an untranslated Hebrew expression, meaning that's truth. So emet can mean truth, and it can refer to correct ideas or concepts. This is because emet has to do with stability and reliability, like when Moses holds up his hands for hours to defeat Israel's enemies, the Amalekites. His friends put a rock under him and support his hands so that his hands will remain emet, or steady. When a met is used of people, it describes reliable and stable character or trustworthiness. Like when Moses appoints leaders in Israel, they're to be people of a met, people who are trustworthy, who won't take bribes or distort justice. So to say that God is full of emet doesn't just mean that God tells the truth or stands for truth. It means that God is faithful and trustworthy. This is why Moses calls God a rock, saying that he's faithful, just, and upright. He's saying that he can trust God to be consistent to his character. And the Hebrew word for trust is actually the verb form of the word emet. It's he'emin. It can be translated as to believe or to have faith, but most basically it means to consider someone trustworthy or to trust. The first person we meet in the Bible who considers God to be trustworthy is Abraham. God makes a promise that Abraham and his wife Sarah will have a huge family and that through them, all nations will experience God's blessing. But Abraham and Sarah are really, really old and they've never been able to have any children. And yet in the face of these challenges, Abraham means God. He considers God trustworthy to open a way forward. And God does show Emet to Abraham and Sarah. In just four generations, their descendants form a whole nation called Israel. And God invites Israel into a trusting and faithful relationship. And when God leads them out of slavery in Egypt, Israel means in God. They trust and rely on him. But when they come to the land God promised to Abraham and they find out it's filled with giant cities protected by giants, their trust in God's Emet fails. But eventually we meet an Israelite who does trust God in the face of giants, it's David. He yells at the giant, you come with a sword and a spear, but I come with the name of the God of Israel. David consistently relies on God. In fact, it said that David walked in and met before God. So David considers God to be faithful and responds with faithfulness. This is why God promises to raise up a faithful descendant of David, whose kingdom will endure forever, or in Hebrew, have emet. This faithful king will become the source of trust and stability for others forever. But when the kingdom later collapses, the Israelites find themselves without a home and without a king. And they cry out, Oh God, where is your loyal love that you swore to David in your emet? They're accusing God of abandoning his promises to Abraham and to David. Is God trustworthy? Is he faithful after all? 
the first line of the New Testament is an answer to that question. This is the lineage of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. In other words, through Jesus, God fulfills his promises. Or as Paul says, Jesus came on behalf of God's faithfulness. He is the faithful king whose kingdom will endure forever and who invites all nations to trust God. Now, trusting anyone is risky. It's hard to know if anyone is really full of emet. But the biblical story portrays a God who's been faithful all along and whose promises were fulfilled in the story of Jesus. And so as we look out at the obstacles facing us and our world, we're invited to take that same risk and join Abraham, David, and the people of God in trusting that God is overflowing with faithfulness. Did you understand that? Did you get that? Did you really, like, seriously get that? Because, it, like as video said, it's kind of hard to trust others. It is, especially if you don't know them. Like, when you meet new people, you don't know who they are. You don't know what they've been through. Like, you don't know. And I feel like this video is so powerful, like... Even in the midst, even in our troubles, because sometimes we can doubt him, like the Israelites. Like, why have you forsaken me? God is faithful to you. Why can't you be faithful to him? Like, start believing that he's there for you in your troubles. Stop shif shifting the blame. Stop it. Stop focusing so much of the troubles. Focus on the image of God instead of the complaints, instead of the gossip. Focus on Him. Him. Nothing is easy. Please don't get that twisted. Please do not get that twisted. None of this is easy. Like, even going back to that video... It wasn't easy back then, and it's not easy now. Like I said, we will have trouble. It is a guaranteed fact that we will. But it's also, it's also up to us, what are we going to do in the midst of our trouble? You know, are we going to go after that person, flip them off, cuss at them, or punch them out, or whatever? You know, is that what we're going to do? It's, it's, uh, it's literally up to us. And when you start shifting your perspective, when you start seeing things different, when you start focusing more on Him, you start to feel peace within yourself. And sometimes you can ask yourself, are you producing fruit? Are you producing fruit? The other two verses that I want to mention is these last two verses. Psalm 51.10 It says this, Create in me, pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And then Psalm 59.16 says, But I will sing of your strength. In the morning I will sing of your Lord, of your love, not Lord, love, for you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. He is our refuge. He is our fortress. He, like I said, He is our checkpoint that we can go to. He is our safe area that we can go to. That's Him. Because there's been times, even in my life, where I'm focusing on the struggles. You even see in my prayer request. You can even sense the tone at times. There are times where I feel very sad, depressed, something happened, crap hits the storm, and I'm just very, very down. There are days that are like that. Of course they are. And there's times where I feel like I'm focused on it so much instead of focusing on him. Because when you focus on yourself, you're kind of relying on your own strength so that you can solve the issue, so that you can solve the problem of what is there. And you start to think of what can I how can I solve this? Instead of looking 
that's evil. Stop blaming others. When something happened, stop shifting the blame. Stop pointing fingers. That's going to get you nowhere. Why not just put it in God's hands? Why not? We can always change. We can always improve. We can. Because we're always going to fall short of His glory. But it's up to us of what we're going to do about it. A, our comfort. Ain't he? Because he should be. The thing that I really want you to take away from this is just believe that he is there. Especially in your troubles, when in your seasons, in your trials. Just believe that he is there. Like, you know, in the Bible, it says that. But in that moment, can you really believe that? In the heat of the moment, can you? Are you going to be so driven by your emotions and start going on a different path? The anger, are you going to stir up that and get mad at that person for stirring the gossip? We shouldn't hate our brothers or sisters. We shouldn't hate anyone. God doesn't hate anyone. We're supposed to even love our enemies. Look at look at between it. Jesus and Judas. Judas sold Jesus out. Jesus even knew beforehand and even told Judas, do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. And yet he felt so remorse and hung himself. Even when Jesus knew what was going to happen. He's like, here he comes. This is it. Do what you got to do. I wonder how many of us will maybe cuss Judas out. Or push him out. Like, if you start hearing a gossip or a rumor of someone that you never met... Are you going to trust that person? Or do you want to at least meet this person and see for yourself? Because if someone came to me and say, Hey, please avoid this person at all costs, I'll probably just ignore that message. Because everyone can change. It's like asking all of us just to ignore that person for the rest of our lives. As that person can never change. As that person can never be good. As there is no redemption. As there is no chances. But think of how many God produces chances for all of us. How many times have we slipped up and fall flat on our face and God is still there saying like, hey, I'm still here for you. Hey, I still forgive you. He does that. And I wonder why can't we do that for others? In the midst of our troubles, because we will have them. And it's not going to be easy. It's not. And like I said earlier, you have free will to do whatever you want to do. You can choose what you're going to do. Especially in the heat of the moment. Are you going to produce the good fruit? The fruits of the Spirit? Patient, kind, love, mercy? All of them. Are you going to be able to produce that? What fruit do you produce? What comes out of you when stuff Hits the storm. What do you produce? And that's up to you. And hopefully this message meant something to you. Especially that video because I love... It's from Bible Project. I don't know if anybody heard of that. It is awesome. I'm telling you that now. If you never heard of it, Google it. YouTube it. It is so, so good. It is, it is really like top tier. In my, in my, in my opinion, by the way, in my opinion, you know, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, this message meant a lot to me because I've been kind of focusing too much on the troubles. I've been kind of focusing too much on the struggles. Like there's so many times that I look at the Discord server and get sad instead of focusing on healing. 
Because I'm like, I don't see the success ever here. Like, I must be doing something wrong. Maybe there's something in my own strength. And I feel when I when I was putting this message together, it meant so much to me. As I feel like I just focus on it way too much. Instead of focusing on it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Holy gracious fire, Lord, I come to your throne, Lord. Lord, hopefully we can do that in the heat of the moment. Just to be able to focus on you. Not focus on what was said to us. Not was focus on this trouble, even though it could be bad or painful. But once we shift it onto you, it feels like everything can be better. It feels like we can start to have peace in our lives. And you are the God of peace. And hopefully we can do that, especially in the heat of moment. To not let our anger get the best of us, depression gets the best of us, or any of our emotions that we may have in the midst of our troubles, in the midst of our persecutions. And hopefully we don't start to blame others or start doing karma against karma, Lord. Hopefully we can maybe slowly to love them, just as you love us. And hopefully maybe to forgive them, just like you do with us. And hopefully we can give them chances, like you do with us. Like, yes, we understand there's consequences for our actions. But at the same time, we know that you're there for us. You have never left our sight. No matter how far we have fallen off the path, or how far we went into the other, the opposite direction of where you want us to go, you were still there with us, and you have never, ever left our side. And I'm so thankful. That you're able to do that. So hopefully. When we go through them. Help us to shift our focus onto you. A lot more. Help us be able to. Have the strength. The perseverance. The endurance. The character. So that we can be able to have. Faithfulness in you. to be faith, That you are a faithful. Individual. That you have never lied to any single one of us. And that you haven't even broke any of your promises. That you have for us either. And I am seriously thankful. For all these, these things that you are Lord. So thankful. And hopefully, even if this was just a reminder, whoever's listening in, whether it's on Discord, Twitch, or YouTube, Lord, hopefully, if maybe if it's speaking to us, and maybe we heard this somewhere before, and maybe we can just say, you know what, I want to actually be a doer, not just a hearer. I don't want to be a reminder, and that's it, and then hear it again some other day as maybe you're trying to speak to us Lord because you're always speaking to me you're always changing me and shifting me and I'm always thankful for that and hopefully you are with others so hopefully we can start being doers of your word so that when stuff happens, we can go straight to you. And be able to focus on you. Instead of focusing on so much on the trouble, on the pain. So that we can have peace. It's not going to be easy now. 
but we could start. I do was holy grace today. A, <coughs> oh my goodness, a man and a a a man. I hope that y'all enjoyed uh, this sermon. Um, like I said, I really want to talk about it because I, like I said, I feel like I've been focusing too much on the server and thinking that barely anyone's going to show up to our summer game con. It's been really effective to me, so I'm actually happy and excited that God has speak to me through this message, and like I said, hopefully to you all too. And also, if this is your first time, if this is your first ever time to accept God into your life, we want to congratulate you. We want to help you. We want to provide you resources for you. We want to be able to give you stuff. So we're going to give you a form. Yes, a, a form. Yes, it is a form. Uh, you can fill out with as much information as you're comfortably given or not. But this is a way to connect with you and be able to answer any question that you have, like, what is baptism? You know, what translation should I read? What denomination church should I go to? You know, how which, which book should I start reading in the Bible? You know, we will love to answer you and help you on your journey. And like I said, we come into a time of fellowship. So you can also come into our Discord server and ask any questions like this so that we can help you out and that we can give you resources. Free! They're 100% free! You don't have to pay anything for these resources. You don't. There it is. You don't have to pay anything. There it is. Discord's a free app. It's free. 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 But yeah, if you want to... We would love to have you. Also, if you would like to donate, uh, this is not offering. This is donate. This is not a church. This is an online ministry. And I'd say this every time. I, because I recommend people to go find a church. As this is not a church, nor meant to replace a church either. Which is why we don't do anything like on Sunday mornings. You know, so that we can, so that people can be able to go to church you know y'all are always welcome here but you can always donate if you want to just dm me i will give you the information if you like to donate it will go towards the ministry i don't care about money it never have i haven't made a single dime off of this ministry and honestly i don't care to because that's not what we should do i don't want to be one of those pastors where you'll be like you have to give me money or i can't do anything for you to me, that's definitely a false prophet. But if you'd like to donate to something like a physical building, like a physical location, yeah, you know. But more likely, it will just go towards the ministry, not to me, because like I said, I don't, I don't care to make money. It'll be nice, but that's my, my true intentions, and it shouldn't be anybody's intention doing a ministry or a church. It's just for money. Um, but we also like to do a thing, a service, does not end here. Whoa, it doesn't end here? It means it's still going? I thought you were ending the stream. Hylian, are you lying to me, Hylian? You are a dirty, filthy liar. Whoa. You didn't hear me say that we we're going to hang out in the Discord server. Like, bruh, there's a link. Join it. Also, we will be having movie night tonight in about 20 minutes. If you want to come to that, that will be in our gaming Discord server. We will be watching Logan tonight. If you uh, like X-Men, Marvel, we're going to be watching Logan here tonight. So hopefully I'll be able to see y'all there as well, as that is both our Discord servers. Um, if you're not Christian or religious, that's also why the second server is there. Like if none of this sermon you know, meant anything for you, or anything, you know, you can always try something new. You know, it never hurts to, you know, try something new. It doesn't. Simply doesn't. But, um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys and girls in the Discord. Y'all take care. Have a wonderful rest of your night. I'm so thankful that it hasn't crashed while I'm doing the sermon. It didn't crash. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It didn't crash. Wow. 
But uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys and girls in the Discord server. Y'all take care. God bless. And no one tell you that they didn't love you today. I love you. As we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Y'all take care.